welcome to the fifth in our series of webinars aimed at helping business owners to take better control of their businesses. I hope you're all warm and surviving the strange times that we live in here in South Africa. And I'd like to have say a warm welcome to all the faces that I see, the familiar faces and names that are coming up on the group. I really appreciate that you're taking time in spite of power outages and load shedding to join us this morning. For those of you who haven't met me yet or haven't worked with me, my name is Candice and I'm the owner and founder of Hasty Consulting. I'm based in Howick in the Midlands of KwaZulu-Natal. And yes, we've also had snow here. We've also got load shedding. And life is all about being a MacGyver. Thing, life throws things at us and it makes life seriously difficult. But you know what? As a small business owner, I think we are the best uh, equipped to be able to leverage what's going on around us and to make it work to our advantage. So I'd like to jump right in today and start asking questions. For those of you who signed up early and registered, you would have received a copy of your free business audit to help you uh, take stock of where you are in your business and to get a feel of what it means to put a business strategy in place. I'm not talking about the regular traditional business plan that everyone knows about. When I started my business, there was lots of tips and uh, people pointing out, you need to have a business plan. You need to have all these different things in place to help you run your business more efficiently. But realistically, not none of these things actually showed me what it was that I needed to do on a day-to-day -day basis to help me deal with things that we have in South Africa. So today I want you to think like a MacGyver, get your pen knife out, think about how are you going to make things uh, happen for yourself and how best you can make uh, plans for your business so that you can keep on running. You don't want to fall down. You don't want to have a hiccup in your system just because you didn't have a strategy or plan in place because you failed to plan. So if you've done your business audit, well done to you. Uh, if you'd like me to have a look at it or to give you some feedback on it, please feel free to email it to me. Um, my email address is on the audit. If you haven't received the audit and you'd like a copy of it, um, please do drop us a WhatsApp or a message in the chat bar, and we'll be sure to send it to you directly after this discussion. So if we're looking at business planning and strategy in the new sense, not the traditional sense, the new sense of things, I like to look at it as a mindset change that as a small business owner we need to do so your business plan is going to help you focus number one on your business it's going to help you formulate strategies to manage your business in circumstances such as this so we've got had a power outage load shedding in our area should have come back our power should have come back at half past nine it's now 11 o'clock there's still no power what is my alternative plan? So today I come to you from my tablet. My tablet is able to be charged via a battery bank. I have my cell phone. I have a UPS on my, on my Wi-Fi. So this means I am able to still access my emails. I'm still able to attend the Zoom session. I can still get on with my business in spite of the fact that there are problems that are out of my control. And for you guys as business owners out there, you will have different issues at hand. Load shedding will impact you in a different way. Um, the road being closed on the weekend on the way to Johannesburg will impact you differently to how it's impacted other people. It might not impact you at all, but you know there are things that happen in life. So part of your business plan and your strategy is going to be about helping you to focus your thinking so that in your business, it's not just about running your business, it's also about what does your business look like? How does it feel? Is it expressing what it is that you wanted to express? And what are your contingency plans in case there is an issue? In case load shedding impacts? I know like on a day, a day like today, 
most of us have had to make alternate plans and go to a coffee shop that has a generator that has free Wi-Fi so that we can still continue with our day-to-day -day functions. And of course, number one, get a cup of good coffee to help us stay alert and on track with what's happening. So when you looked at your audit, there was a couple of different angles that we looked at. Um, first of all, I got you to have a look at researching your business and making sure that you looked at your business as if you were an outsider. Was your business easy to find? Could you find all the information about your business? Were you shocked to find that perhaps your business was showing one profile over here and a different profile over there? If any of you Googled me, you might have noticed that on my business profile for LinkedIn, everything's up to date. He has the new logo. He has all the information. On my personal LinkedIn page, I've still got my old logo across the top of the screen, my banner on my LinkedIn screen. So these are things that highlight to you how important it is to look at your business with an outsider's viewpoint so that you can experience it as if you were the customer. So we won't go through all the things that are in the um, in this schedule, but I hope that you found that by going through it, you were able to look at your business and to discover what it was um, that was great about your business. Uh, where are the, what are the areas that you are lacking? Uh, what are the areas where you could do have improvements? Um, and again, what are the areas that either were, were completely neglected um, and that you can work on? So for me, the new way, the not so traditional way of looking at your business is a fresh set of eyes at least every quarter. And that goes back to your planning. So when you look at your planning, are you making time to plan for your business? Are you making time to spend looking at your business? Because when we look at our marketing of our businesses, we notice a very big uh, aspect of it is how do you make your customers feel? How does your customer experience your business? Do they feel like you really want their business or do they feel like, wow, this is hard work? Goodness gracious, I couldn't even get a refund. Uh, I was trying to get the right size of shoe. I was looking for it in a different color. How do you, how do you get um, the answers that you need, especially when you, when you try to contact a company they either don't answer? or you get connected to a robot. Um, there are things in, in business that frustrate us. So if you think about these things when you're doing your planning for each quarter, you are able to now start applying those things to your business. Okay, so when we were looking at um, your business planning and what is the importance of the uh, strategy, I always like to write down the, my top three goals. So when I look at business planning and the strategy for my business, number one, I look at the focus. Number two, I look at what direction we want to go in. And number three, I make a note of my goals for that specific quarter. When you say, well, okay, great, I've done that, but why should I do this? Why should I do planning every quarter? Why should I start looking at my business from this viewpoint? Well, my answer to you is that so many business owners that I've met and that I've spoken to when I was doing research for, for the program that I've written. People say, I know how to run my business. I know how to be a beautician. I know how to be an electrician. I know what to do in project management. But nobody tells you how to run a business. What are the things that I need to take care of on a day-to-day -day basis? So if you don't have time to plan and you don't have a strategy in place, it impacts various aspects of your business. So a lack of focus and a lack of direction can impact your marketing. You go to the, to the marketing department and you ask them, or you go to an advertising agency and you say, I want to do a new website. I want to do an advertising campaign. I want to do the splash on the radio station, whatever it is. You want to go and create a social media campaign. How do you create it if you're not even clear about what your goals are, if you're not clear about what your focus is, if you cannot explain it 
to these people that are going to be doing the work. And especially if it's an outsourced pro, um, service, if you don't explain to them what you want and what you want it to look like, the impact you want to make, how do they create something for you? And it's something that you're going to be paying for. So it's costing you money, money that all small business owners need to hang on to. I was listening to a really interesting podcast yesterday um, about a guy who is uh, in the finance industry and he says, being financially independent is everybody's goal. To be able to retire one day, whether you want to travel overseas, if you want to live a comfortable life, you need to be financially independent. And in order to be financially independent, we need to make sure that we are um, we are working towards it all the time. We need to have a focus and a clear direction to make sure that we are achieving the goals that we've set and that we need we make the sacrifices that we need to make in order to enable us to achieve that financial independence. So we were talking about impact. Not only does a lack of vision and goals impact your marketing, for instance, but it's going to impact your purchasing. So your finance department, how do you go out and buy a new vehicle for, for your expansion in your business or look at renting a new property or purchasing a property? How do you go out and do make these purchases, make these expensive decisions if you don't know what your cash flow is, if you don't know what your numbers are, if you are unable to um, advise your, your, your people as to what they can and can't do? Um, it's super important that you know these numbers and you know these answers, but if you haven't made time to plan, you won't know what's going on. And if you haven't planned going forward, then you are not going to be able to um, accommodate these decisions. And you might end up making a great decision because your expansion plan is great. However, the timing wasn't right, or you hadn't looked at the market and you hadn't you know, made, made adjustments for those kind of things. My favorite area is obviously the aspect of staff. Staff are our number one uh, asset, our number one uh, tool. Uh, people are not things, but they are the biggest asset that we have in our business because nine times out of 10, our staff are the ones that are processing our vision and goal, the direction of the company and communicating it directly one-to-one -one with our clients. Nine times out of 10, we as the business owner actually end up moving into other areas and focusing on different things within our business. And it's our staff that are actually dealing with our customers. The stuff that we love to do, we don't get to do, and they get to do it. So if you're not a good boss, if you're not a good leader, if you're not a good manager, um, how do you get your staff to do what you want to do, you, what you need them to do? If you haven't got a clear vision or plan of what the business needs to do, then you are unable to communicate that to your staff. They won't know how best to deal with your, um, with your clients. When your client comes in or a customer walks into your shop and says, there's a problem with this product, what shall I do? I want to return this product. I want to exchange this item. I need to cancel my accommodation booking. I need a refund. What are your policies? Do your staff know what your policies are? So these are things that are impacted by your lack of planning or your lack of strategy within the business. And so as business owners and leaders, we need to be able to communicate what it is. We need to um, be familiar and comfortable with all these things so that our staff know what's going on, that our team around us can actually move forward and carry out our wishes, carry out our goals, carry out our directives uh, with a clear vision in mind of what it is ex what, what is expected of them. Another aspect of business that um, planning and strategy is vital to, it comes down to relevance. And in one of the case studies we're gonna talk about just now, um, relevance was critical to this business's uh, sustainability and growth. Um, how do we make sure that our businesses are, are sustainable? Well, we need to make sure that we are relevant. If you don't 
uh, stay relevant in the industry, then you're going to have an issue with trying to move your business forward. You could be the person who, for instance, like me, <laughs> I'm learning to uh, learning a uh, little curve that we had this month was that I've created this this PDF, this business audit for everyone to use. And we created it in a way that appeals to me. I'm old school. I like to be, I'm a very visual character. I like to write things down. I like beautiful stationery. I like colored pens. I hate technology, actually. So being live on a webinar, doing videos and all those kind of things makes me very, very uncomfortable. But I'm learning to embrace it. I'm learning to grow, to be relevant, to stay in the situation by making the adaptions that need to happen. So if you got that PDF, you will know that in order to use it, you actually had to print it out and then you could only fill it in. So yes, it was brought to my attention, Candice, you can't always do things just for you. This is not actually for you. This is for all your clients out there. You need to make it relevant to the market out there. So what did I do? I picked up the phone. I was like, hey, girls, listen, team, please. We, after this, we're going to need to make it into an editable PDF so that people can fill it in online so that we can accommodate those people whose passion is actually, I want it to be efficient. I want it to be effective. I like technology and gadgets. I want to be able to work online. I don't want to print it out. I'm actually going paperless. So I don't have a printer. Can't print it out. I don't want to have to go to the photocopy shop and ask them to print it for me. So yes, staying relevant. And we'll talk about it in the, in the case study shortly. Um, you need to make sure that your business is relevant and you need to make sure that whether it's your training program, whether it's the way that you're operating, whether it's your systems and procedures, um, your business needs to stay relevant. So we have to make time to accommodate planning for these things. And that's not necessarily short-term planning, it's the longer-term planning, where you can look at your business and say, okay, cool, um, this needs to happen, but I've got eight months to do it. This needs to happen in five years' time, I need to be able to say I've achieved these goals so that my business is up to date with world standards or with um, techno technological advances, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes make sure that your business stays relevant. And then the last uh, point that I've got about why you would want to do planning and strat strategic development planning for your business is because in most cases, when you start a small business, your intention was never to just be me, myself and I running this little business. We all have goals. We all have dreams of becoming uh, an empire, of leaving a legacy, Maybe you want to grow a business that you can leave to your children um, for someone else to take over. You perhaps want to have a really big team of people. So expansion. We, we need to do planning so that our businesses can, can expand. And it comes uh, in a very similar vein to what we spoke about with regards to relevance. But expansion is, is key and expansion can't just happen overnight. Often you see the businesses that expand too quickly don't have the systems and procedures in place to be able to accommodate the level of growth. So for instance, lots of sales, lots of money coming in, happy people. Oh, Sherbert, we didn't have a manufacturing or production line, a communication system or a plan in place to be able to produce that much product. So we were unable to now follow through with the next three months or four months. We sold out all our stock and it's going to take six months to, to get or source new stock and now we don't have stock to sell. So now what happens to our business? You might grow your business too quickly. Your team comes in. You haven't done training. You've got much bigger expenses because you've maybe got new vehicles. You've got new equipment. You've got extras of things. So your overheads have gone up. And how do you manage the staff ratio? Making sure that the staff are trained, that they're happy, that they deal with your clients correctly, that your invoicing is still being done. I mean, we had an instance recently, the geezer stopped getting hot. There was water, but no heat. Cold showers are not my favorite. And we called in the plumber and sure, no problem. He came in immediately. He was great. His service was excellent. And 
he fixed the geezer, all sorted, awesome. And then two weeks later, hi, Mr. Plumber, please can I have an invoice? Eventually, a month later, at the end of the month, the invoice did arrive, but then they sent it on WhatsApp. And people, how do you run a business like that? You know, things get lost on WhatsApp. We are busy. Uh, I might have missed the tick or I opened it and didn't, you know, I went into file 13, it's gone. Where is it? So if you are a small business, a system that allows you to check what is going on, if your business has expanded too quickly and you didn't have a checklist to say, has this been completed? Has it been invoiced? Have I received the payment? Have I ordered new product? Whatever. We can slip up and that those are, are minor things that can impact the development of our business. So it all comes back down to, as we were saying, strategic planning for your business, not in the traditional sense, but in the, poor, in the, in the planning stages of measuring what you've done, seeing where you're going, making sure that your picture in your mind is clear so that you can communicate it to your staff and your team, your marketing people, et cetera, et cetera, are able to now walk with you, alongside you on this journey um, in your business. So I think let's move forward now onto the next step. I'm going to discuss, I've got two uh, case studies that I wanted to just go through briefly to give you a little bit of an insight into how strategic planning has assisted these businesses. Um, as I said to you, uh, the people that have worked with me know I like pictures, I use my hands, I get rather excited and passionate, and I use lots of examples. I find that um, examples help us to focus in on, on a specific point. They help us to understand better because sometimes we can relate better to an example than to the theory. So in my case, practical, practical, practical. I like the physical. I want to see it. I want to taste it. I want to touch it um, as opposed to just theory, 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 study, study, study. Doesn't work for me. So the first case study is um, actually a client of mine and they are a national company. They're based in Johannesburg. They have branches uh, throughout the country and they offer fiber networks and ISP, internet, to the, and not just to the home, to gated suburbs. So they've been going, they've been in the, in the um, industry for 15 years now, uh, as I say, national, big teams of people, huge budgets, and they're getting on with it. In our little town of Howick, they have been in our area for 12 of those 15 years, and they have been providing a service to our retirement villages, a gated community. So cool. They were in the area, they've been doing what they've been doing, offering a great service, clients are happy, everyone's happy. And then of course, a couple of years ago, here comes fiber. People want speed, people want um, access to information. They want to be able to count on, um, they want to be able to, you know that story, when you turn on the light, the, the switch, I want the light to turn on. When I open the tap, I want the water to come out. Same thing applies here. When, when I connect to the internet, I want to have speed. I want the thing to arrive so I can watch my movie, I can do the updates that I need to do and receive my emails. I can make phone calls, and especially now with load shedding. Um, if I've got a UPS on my, in, on my a router, then I can still have internet. Great. Um, in, in our KZN area, people who live here know we, we have hills. We are not flat. We are not normal. We have huge hills, and we are, um, if you're not in line of sight of a tower, you often don't get signal. Cell phone signal drops. When the load shedding happens, no tower, no signal. So people battle. Anyway, this company decided, okay, we're going to supply fiber to the village. And they came waltzing in, this big corporate from Joburg, and decided they're going to introduce fiber. And they had gazebos and banners, and they were busy promoting fiber. And they didn't look at their market and say, well, hang on a second. Most of the people in these villages that they've, you know, where, where they have their service are over the age of 70. 
technolo technology has surpassed them. Yes, they have smartphones, but they don't always know how to use them uh, to the full extent. Anyway, long story short, this business had to adapt and they had to change their way of managing their approach to selling a fiber within this within this um, village. And I was lucky enough to come on board with them. I've done consulting with them. And we were, uh, I can tell you straight, when we first went in, banners, people used to go and walk around us and go to the other side of the dining room. They were not even going to look in our direction, never mind talk to us. And we're not interested in speaking to us. So we said, okay, fine, take down the banners. Take down the poster, get rid of anything that says fiber. Get rid of anything that says, we had to sell you something because we're not. And we created a strategic plan, which was get to know, like, trust. We've been working in the Ambers now as a group of ladies that I've, that I've got who work in the Ambers. They're there twice a week. And they are literally there to help the old people with their cell phones. We have developed relationships. We've built um, friendships, and we are known as we are known as the Tartan Ducks. We help these old people to get their ducks in a row, and they see us now, and they send their friends to come and help us. Can you help us? I don't know why why these ticks are happening on here. I don't know how to WhatsApp. I don't know how to delete these messages. What does this mean? My phone can't update. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You get the picture. You know what it's like when your when your parents. My parents are young, so I don't I don't have such an issue. My mom is a gadget chick of note, so she knows more stuff than I know. But older people take longer to adapt to the changes. So they you you these old people, their kids give them a new phone, and they're like, "Wow, look at this phone. What must I do with it? How does this work? Where's my photos?" Where's, where's Facebook? Where's Solitaire? What must I do? They don't know what to do with it and they don't know how to access the information. So by changing our approach with this village, we have been able to take the scary concept of fiber and we have turned it into a need. We came at it from the other angle. We've taught these people how to use their phones. The more they use their phones and they understand how to use it and how technology is helping them, the more data they need. Hey, yo, did you know how expensive data is? These people are shocked and horrified. I used to buy 60 rand a day, 60 rand a week for, for of data. I'm now having to buy, you know, double that, triple that. Um, so by realizing that data is expensive and that they're using data and we've created the need, they now are understanding that, okay, what is fiber? How does it work? Okay, cool. We're now starting to sign up people for fiber. And this is great because the older people are now getting, um, they be, their lives are being impacted by the benefits of technology. Their lives are being improved because they can now have communication with their families overseas. They can do video chats, they can do phone calls. Even when the power goes down, they can still access, um, a, you know, a, make a phone call or they can still watch YouTube on their phone. They can still do all of these things that need to be done. Um, and especially like what we've had over the last few days, six to seven hours of no power a day with no explanation. And yeah, those are lonely times. So for this company, um, as I say, Joburg based and working their way around um, fiber to old people, it can be done, but it took a bit of planning. It took a bit of time to focus, to brainstorm, to come up with new ways of looking at the issue. Instead of keep on doing the same thing, banging your head against this brick wall, we did a complete 360, well, no, 180 degree turn and said, hang on a second, let's do it a different way. And it has been the most rewarding experience because you see the, the delight on their faces when they learn new tips, they learn new, new um, techniques on their phones, 
but at the same time for this for the for this business they are now starting to see a turnaround where before people were like get away from us don't come near us and they couldn't build and develop their footprint in this area they are now signing up people to utilize their service and let's face it fiber is something that we all use and something that we all need in this day and age and it's something that you can have on a month-to-month -month basis and once you've got it you don't want to let it go so these are people that will sign up as a as an ongoing service and for this client just that change of strategic viewpoint and a little bit of change in plan has helped them to um, recapture the market that they used to have but that they were very quickly losing because they kept saying the same thing but not listening to what the clients wanted the other case study that um, i had looked at which i thought was a really great um, one was actually a local business uh, well they local to Howick their main office is here but they actually also have branches throughout the country and they are a skills development company um, they focus specifically on skills development in person training with regards to you know in the workplace CPR first aid with driving uh, admin skills scaffolding and working at hearts etc etc you name it they can do it and the viewpoint that i looked at with regards to this case study was that this is a family-run business and it's been going for several years um, they travel every quarter and visit all the branches so it's not quite a franchise but it's it's run on that concept of a franchise and they share their experiences with um, the other trainers they experience they have grown and developed with the people on board and they've communicated their vision and their goals and their plan to all these people that are working with them around the country and doing skills development because skills development is something that is uh, very sorely needed um, especially when you've got a good company who works with their people um, to give you the best possible service and practical uh, experiences. How many times do you say, I've got the piece of paper, but I now need the, I need the help. So I've done my learner's license, I now need to get my drivers and I need to go and practice. And you want someone who knows what they're doing, who's going to help you and teach you all the tips and tricks and give you a chance to have practical experience so that you can now confidently go into the workplace and do what needs to be done. So what I particularly liked about this business is the fact that they have already, they're young people. And I say young because, hey, <laughs> we are young. Uh, they're in their 50s um, and they've already started doing succession planning for their business. They've already started identifying people within their business and in the branches around the country who are able to be managers, who are able to be um, leaders, who are good communicators. They have started mentoring uh, somebody to be able to take over the branch here in, in this area. So as difficult as it is for some of us to take a step back and let other people come in with their new ideas, their new ways of doing things, bringing technology, bringing in additions, um, it is critical for any business, if you fall down because you've had a heart attack or you've had burnout or you were in a car accident or whatever it is, how does your business continue? If you don't have a strategic plan, if you don't have um, a structure in place, if you don't have staff that are trained and know what's going on, how do they manage your business when you are sick? How do they manage your business if you're off uh, recuperating? How do they manage? Um, to keep in touch with your clients to make sure that your message your vision your goals are being communicated that the customer experience that you worked so hard to create is being continued uh, in you know going forward so this particular business as i say they have already got contingency plans in place for the succession of their business so that mom and dad can start stepping back and that the new generation can start moving forward 
And the way that they're doing it, as I say, is mentoring. You've got, you've got it to a certain level and you are now being trained and given the opportunity to experience in a safe environment. I don't know if any of you saw a video I did recently. We were talking about parenting and how running a business and being a business owner is a little bit like being a parent. Sometimes we have to discipline our kids. Sometimes we have to say no. Sometimes we have to say, you will go to school. I don't care if you haven't done your homework or if it's cold or if science is being mean to you. We have to treat our business in the same, in the same manner. We, we need to make sure that our business is um, given the opportunity to grow, to flourish, to expand, to develop, to change just as our children from a little toddler has grown and developed and gained new skills and their physical shape has changed and morphed from a young from a little boy into a, a young boy you know young man and now into a fully grown um sure an adult uh you a lot of you have met my boy Liam he's not such a boy anymore he turned 18 a few months ago and he's got a driver's license and he's in matric and he's got a girlfriend and you know what? Watching him become the young man that he is has been the best process ever. And yes, it was hard. We've had laughs, we've had tears, we've had arguments. And sometimes I love him, but I don't like him very much. But you know what? Being a parent is awesome. And I want to say to you, being a business owner is awesome. Don't be afraid to flex your muscles a little bit. Don't be afraid to stick to your guns and say, this is the way that I want to do it. This is my focus. This is my direction. Going into business is like having a child. You don't just do it for five minutes. It's not just something that we, oh, I feel like it today, let's do it. No, hang on a second. This could be a 10 or a 15 or a 20 year commitment. So it's completely up to you. It all comes down to you. What is it that you want out of your business? What is it that you want your business to do, to achieve, to grow into, to become? So if you haven't seen the PDF, if you haven't done some work on your business, if you'd like to know more about the focus points of um, your goal setting and getting your, your direction right for your business, whether you're just updating it or whether you're starting out from scratch, please do feel free to give us a shout. Go and check out on the website. Look at our YouTube videos from some of the other webinars we've done. Give me a call. Um, I'm more than happy to book you in for, a, for a, a quick chat, do a consult and see where we can work together. How can I help you? What tips can I share with you to help you to grow your business into something that you can be proud of, something that's going to carry you from this point to the next point? carry you into the future and whether you step off and one of your kids steps in or whether you bring in an outsider who's going to be part of your succession planning to carry your business forward it doesn't matter the fact of the matter is that your business is anything that you want it to be you just have to be brave enough to dream big to make time be disciplined Focus on what needs to be done in your business and then also make time for what needs to be done working on your business. So I say to people when they ask me, what do you do? I'm your accountability partner. I help you to focus not just on working in your business, but working on your business, making sure that the planning that needs to be done can be done. Sometimes you already know exactly what to do, but you just want someone to sound it off. You just want to be able to brainstorm. You just want a person who you can say, hey, listen, I've done this and this and this. Please just, you know, give me a thumbs up. Tell me, is this on the right, you know, on the right path or am I completely smoking my socks? So small business can be a scary place. However, we have got each other's backs. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be a full-time employment plan. You can, you can book me for one hour. You can book me for an hour once a month. You can book me for a coffee date. We can do a virtual coffee date. We can do an in-person coffee date. Depends where you are. 
Um, the fact of the matter is that I'm a political person, as I said. I love sharing. I love helping. I love making a difference. So for me, being able to work with business owners and help them to achieve their true potential is what it's all about. So let's see how can we work together. Let's see how we can get your business focused, help you to start developing your business plan, your strategy, and getting you to the next level so that you can start even things like succession planning. So I'd like to see if there are any questions, if anyone has put through some um, uh, specific points that they want me to look at. I'm just going to have a look here on WhatsApp because the girls normally send it to me on WhatsApp. Right. Okay, Nessa. She has asked us a question. What is your first tip when it comes to creating and leading a business? Okay, so Nessa, great question. Thank you. Um, I think that if you are talking about creating a business, so starting from scratch, I presume, then one of the things, and funny enough, I actually met with one of the ladies from Women in Business last week, and we had a great coffee date. Nopila, thank you for your time. It was so awesome to chat. One of the things that we chatted about was exactly that. When you're creating a business, one of the, the most difficult things to do is to see where do I fit in? Is this something that the market is going to need? And am I going to be any good at it? So one of the things that we look at is to say, um, start at the beginning, look at your skills, look at your passions, look at what you're good at, uh, look at your past work experiences. So as if you were writing a CV for handing into a business, start with, start with that concept. Create a, a page and just start putting in all these things that are good about you. What you like, as I said, what you like to do, what you're good at, previous experience, skills that you have, um, things that you did in the past. You'll be surprised how many things come up. Then have a look at a separate page and start making notes of what are your ideas. Um, around your business about what this is that you want to create what are the things that you like to do and you want to do so jot them all down and have a look at where they overlap because nine times out of ten it's in that that little zone in the middle where what you like to do and what you're good at overlaps that is often the place where you'll find um the creation once you've created uh the concepts then we go into the next stage, which is going to be researching, uh, checking what's in the market, seeing what else is out there and having a look at it. But that is that is quite an involved question. So we can chat further, Nessa, um, and I can share some more tips with you. Leading the business. Well, again, if you're not clear yourself about what it is that you want to do or how you're going to do it and what your focuses are, um, you, and it makes it more difficult to communicate it with other people. So leadership is about helping other people to be the best version of themselves, whether it's doing a job for you or whether it's um, being involved with um, their own business, their own growth, their own development. We are not here to tell people what to do. We are here to enable them to do things. And that's where often you find managers and leaders. I want to tell you what to do. You'll do it the way I told you to do it. And you'll only do it that way. Otherwise, it's wrong. And then you get the other people who say, I don't mind how you how you get to this answer, as long as you get it in the right time frame and that we get the same result. So let's look at leadership opportunities there. Right. Uh, Tammy Kruger, thank you for your question. She says, what steps are being taken to align the business strategy with the changing market dynamics and emerging trends to maintain a competitive advantage? Nice question, Tammy. That actually ties in very nicely with um, one of the cases that I was looking at as an option for a study for today was a, another friend of mine is involved with um, AI stuff. She has access to products from overseas, which 
are used for skills development and training of, of staff in different work environments, and they're using artificial intelligence programs. So it's like playing a video game, except that you're training people using it. And she was able to leverage her business in, uh, in a market which was becoming very competitive, so many people involved, and by sourcing and becoming the agent in this country for certain products, she was able to take her business to a new level by engaging um, this technology into her business. It was a scary leap of faith because the products are super expensive to bring into this country. Uh, she started doing it before lots of other people were doing virtual reality training. And she was having to cold call people and say, can I do a demo? Can I do a demo? And people are like, wow, that's awesome. I love it. And when they heard the price tag, they were like, woo, we're doing it. But as time has progressed and she had it as part of her plan, she was able to now take her business to the next level because um, people already knew her. They were already liked her. They already seen her product. They already knew that she knew her stuff. So they were able to take it further. And that's where market research is critical. Sometimes we think we've got a great idea, but often it's the way that we present it to people. So they become, um, yeah, if they don't know you and they don't trust you, they're not necessarily going to buy from you. So you need to make sure that you're approaching things from the right angle um, to maintain your competitive edge. Because if you are not relevant, if you're like me, and you sent everyone a PDF that they have to print out, then you're going to be left behind because the people that are moving forward wanted an, an item that they could do uh, you know, online. So yes. Tammy, I might have to give you some other feedback later. I just want, don't want to run out of time. Okay, Villain Cassini, thank you for your question. She says, her business is new. I want to know which challenges can, can affect your business. Okay. Um, challenges? depending on what area you're in. I think perhaps if you can give me more detail, I'll be able to answer the question in a more specific way. Perhaps you could send me an email or drop me a WhatsApp afterwards and we can chat further. Okay, Clarissa says, what are the benefits of having a proper business plan structure? Your business plan structure is uh, vital because um, for those of you who were on the on the, the webinar that we had in February, we were talking about finance. One of the main benefits of having a proper structure in place is that you are able to plan and strategize for your business going forward in the long term. So from a financial aspect, people will be more likely, so uh, financial institutions will be more likely to um, give you that loan that you've applied for or offer you a line of credit because they can see that the plan that you have for your business, you've done your time, you've done your due diligence, you've researched it correctly, you've done your, um, your, your uh, structures, you've got your systems, your business is sustainable, and that you have a plan of grow, growth and development so that your business can keep on moving forward. Um, another way of looking at it, at it is to say, well, how do you plan a holiday? If you don't know the destination, um, do you need to take a boat? Do you need to take an aeroplane? Are you driving there? Is there a train trip involved? Do I need an international license? Do I need winter clothes? Do I need summer clothes? Is it on the beach? Is it in the mountains? Where is it? What am I doing? Your business plan and strategy. Besides what we've spoken about today, that actual traditional business plan um, structure is critical for the forward projection of your of your business if you haven't taken the time to put that business plan in place and keep that document relevant that document should be like a user manual that is relevant to the running of your business um then it's no good writing it and sticking it in a drawer or saving it on your computer you actually need to keep referring to it and in your quarterly planning and processing of of your goals and, and um, measuring what you've done you would need to take that further. So yes, that, um, that business plan and structure is critical. And one of the major benefits is having a plan that your business has a future and that it can 
achieve and excel in the areas that it is um, going forward. Okay, technology and relevance. Okay, um, Paul's telling me that Villain Cosini is in the construction industry. Okay, her business is new. What challenges will affect her business? Okay, construction is a very, very interesting um, aspect. Uh, as you know, in KZN, we have some construction mafia guys and we, yeah, they are very close knit <laughs> in general. Construction is a very close knit market, but it's a great example of um, where planning is important. If you don't have the right contacts, if you don't have the right suppliers, if you don't have the right contractors to help you to, to do the different aspects of construction um, and project management, you are nothing more than just the, the conductor of, of the orchestra. So you need to make sure that whatever it is that you are very clear about who you are, what it is that you're wanting to do in the construction industry, and you need to know what your objectives are uh, to achieve for your clients. So are you um, a subcontractor where you're doing tiling or brick laying or um, putting on roofs or doing the gutters or a painter or whatever it is, or are you the person who is over, the project manager overseeing the whole thing, in which case you've got the subcontractors working for you? Um, and in this industry, there are so many pitfalls that can impact you because there are things that you can't control. Your labor that it doesn't arrive at work, uh, taxi strikes, so they can't get to work, bad weather impacts um, the, the timing of a project. If you don't do, um, if you don't uh, keep on track with regards to your timelines and deadlines, uh, you might, if you didn't finish this section, the next part can't continue. So we can't put on the roof until this is done. We can't put on the gutters until the roof is done. We can't paint until that's done. Don't do the painting before the electrician's been and they've now you know, dug into the walls and put in the cables. Um, so there are, <laughs> there's lots of pitfalls that can come into it. And as I mentioned previously, I'd love to discuss it further with you um, because there are, uh, I, I do have a bit of background in that industry and yeah, it is a very exciting um, industry. Okay. Okay, so Paula is asking, how does what you are saying apply to a solopreneur? I am a freelance slash con contracted writer and copy editor. Okay, so. You are, you are in a situation where your work is reliant on other people. So again, you would be doing this on a much smaller scale. You would be saying, okay, well, I need to do, my budget says I need this much income. Therefore I need to work so many hours and this is what I'm prepared to do. You might be a stay at home mom and you wanting to start back into the business or you are, um, your kids have got to a stage where they are now a little bit more independent and you are you have more time available on your hands to start uh, spending on work. So I would start at the beginning and say, okay, cool. What are my goals? What are my, my, my plans with regards to the time that I'm putting in or the, the income that I need to create? And from there, you can then do your planning around achieving your goals. Okay, I can hear there's lots of noise going on outside. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, working from home definitely has its challenges, although we've managed to uh, leverage load shed, well, not load shedding, power outages. It looks like we still have no power. Um, we can work around things like this. As I said at the beginning, we can be a MacGyver. We can work, um, you know, to the best of our abilities, but unfortunately for children that bark and the neighbor that's busy fixing his alarm that was going off all weekend <laughs> are out of my control. Um, but life, life goes on. This is, these are the challenges that impact business owners. So uh, as Mpo has said on the, on the chat there, if we do run out of time, please feel free to, to contact me. I see many of you have, have requested a copy of the PDF. Thank you so much for, 
uh, making contact. I will uh, definitely email you now after the session and send you a copy of that PDF. At the moment, as I said, it is a print out and fill in kind of document, but I think you'll enjoy it. There's a, there's a bit of interesting information at the beginning to help you get into the vibe. And the concept, the concept with this document is print it out, take your time, fill it out, do the research, do the, do the work, because it really is quite, um, quite an eye opener. As I say, I did it for my own business and I've been working on my business and growing it. And um, yes, as I say, we leave, you keep looking at the same stuff and you can still miss something. Um, and the last thing I can say is don't be scared. Business is scary, but you are amazing. And you have, uh, you have a goal and you have an offering which someone out there needs. So let's work together. Let's have each other's backs. Let's move forward into uh, the new, the new not quarter, but chart is a quarter. Winter is cold, but it's also time for growth and development. And as your accountability partner, I'm here to have your back. I'm here to help you along. Um, it doesn't have to be a big issue. You don't have to sign up for a long-term process. You sometimes just need someone for a short space in your life where they can help you to move forward. If you find that you've got bigger things that you want to, to know about, then please feel free to give me a call as well. Um, sharing and mentoring is something that I'm very passionate about. I wasn't able to go into nurturing and caring for people as a nurse or as you know something that was a childhood goal. Um, so I'm doing it in a completely other sphere. And the beauty of it is that I get to deal with such amazing people as yourselves. Big thank you to all of you who have attended today and thank you so much for your engagement. It really has been an awesome session and I really appreciate the time and the energy that you have shared with us today. So I look forward to seeing all of you soon and to hearing more from, from each of you, engaging with you online um, or in person. And I will be in touch with you via email after the session. So from me, Candice, Hasty Consulting, your business accountability partner. Thank you so much.